Uh, hi folks, today we're going to take a look at uh, relative rates of growth uh, between functions or what's otherwise known as order of growth. So we've actually talked about this but more from uh, an intuitive perspective. Now we have the tools uh, to compare the rates of growth of functions uh, in a more analytical way. First of all though we need to understand what we mean by relative rates of growth. So we're going to take a look at an example here. We're going to compare y equals x and y equals 10x. We see here that if we look at both uh, tables and if you think about the lines, uh, the graphs of each of these lines, y equals 10x grows more quickly than y equals x. However when we look at the values here, so when x equals 10, 100, 1000, we see that this column, the numbers in the left column, never really become insignificant relative to the columns, uh, to the values in the right. So 10 to the 6, 10 to the 7, 10 to the 7 is a much bigger number, but we can't really say that 10 to the 6 is insignificant. So 1 million isn't insignificant with respect to 10 million. It's uh, just 10% of it. And when we're talking about orders of growth, or functions that have different orders of growth, we're talking about functions where the value of the function with a lower order of growth becomes eventually insignificant with respect to the second function. And if we take a look at y equals 10x and y equals 10 to the x, and we look at a table of values here, we see that that's just what occurs. So if you take 10 to the 6, y equals 10x is equal to 10 to the 7, a huge number, but insignificant compared to 10 to the 1 million. So again, when we're talking about different orders of growth, we're talking about one function becoming insignificant with respect to the other. And that leads us to our definition here. So when we're working with relative rates of growth, and for now, we're going to start with uh, just talking about um, positive functions. And uh, you can make the uh, appropriate alterations if you're talking about functions that are actually decreasing to negative infinity. So we'll say let f and g be strictly positive. Okay, and since we're talking about n behavior, we're really only interested for large values of x. So for large values of x, okay, then we say that f grows faster than g. Okay, so we'll start with that. We'll call that number one. We'll say that f grows faster than g, or, and probably a better term for it, we say that f has a higher order of growth. Okay, and the condition that we need is we'll take the limit as x goes to infinity, not surprisingly, and we're going to compare the quotient of f at x over g at x. Okay, and if g at x becomes insignificant as x gets larger and larger, then this limit should be equal to infinity. Or, alternatively, you can compare the ratio of g at x over f at x, and again, if g at x is to become insignificant over time, then that limit should be equal to zero. Okay. Alternatively, they could grow at what we call the same rate, and that would be the example of x and 10x. Even though 10x does grow faster in terms of order of growth, uh, we actually say that they have the same order of growth. So f and g have whoops, the same order of growth. If, and here the limit is x goes to infinity of f at x over g at x. Alternatively, you could have g at x over f at x. And we say that this needs to be equal to some constant, okay, not equal to zero. Okay, so as long as the limit approaches some fixed number that's not equal to zero, and obviously L will be positive since we're assuming that all these numbers are positive, uh, 
we say that they have the same order of growth. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at um, an example here. So let's say we look at uh, f at x equals x cubed plus 7x and g at x equals 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 2x. In order to compare the orders of growth, what you'll do is you'll take the limit as x goes to infinity of x cubed plus 7x over 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 2x. Okay, and in order to take this limit, again, we can use our old trick of dividing top and bottom by the highest power of x. So here we would have limit as x goes to infinity of, and let's divide the top by x cubed and the bottom by x cubed. So we have 1 plus 7 over x squared over 2 plus 3 over x minus 2 over x squared and these terms all approach zero as x goes to infinity and so we're left with one half and that's not equal to zero so f and g have the same order of growth okay so what i'd like you to do is i'll post here and you can stop the video in a second to copy down these examples. So this is what I want you to work on. So not surprisingly here, we're comparing a quadratic and a cubic. Um, I think we probably know where that's going. But what about two exponential functions? Do we expect them to have the same order of growth or different orders of growth? What about two logarithmic functions? Okay. Will what happens in two affect what happens in three? Okay. E to the x, x to the x. I think we probably know where that's going. Now this here, this last one, Give me a little hint, and this is something we'll look at next time, is instead of trying to compare these two, okay, it might be easier to compare each of them to x to the two-thirds. And I want you to look at each of the two functions and why I'm suggesting that you compare it to x to the two-thirds. So work on these examples, and uh, we'll take a look at the solutions next time.